Welcome back. We are discussing section 5.4, applying definite integration, distribution of wealth, and average value. So we had so far addressed part of this second learning objective, but we're going to keep on rolling with this. Uh, in particular, use it to compute net excess profit. Uh, distribution of wealth, we're going to save for another one because these are, these are big examples. So let's see if we can get on track here and find that right slide. <clears throat> so net excess profit is one of the uh, textbooks kind of pet projects for for uh, area between two curves so it's a specific application of this idea that if you want the area between two curves you look at the difference between the two functions integrated on some interval so in this case the specific functions we're looking at happen to be rates of an uh, of, of profit essentially so uh, the rate at which profit is changing and if we compare two different investments rates like this, we get uh, and, and take their integral, we get the net excess profit. So essentially, how much more um, profit does one investment gain over some fixed period of time than the other? So we're looking at uh, derivatives. Again, these are little primes, right? So these are rates of change. And we're comparing two plans. And we're going to see what we can do. But again, remember, this is essentially just the area between these two rates of profit curves. It's just that we have a nice interpretation for it. So uh, our, our task here, all of that was just sort of the definition of net excess profit. So the actual thing we're supposed to do here is find the net excess profit during the period from the beginning. So now, I guess I'm going to say t equals zero, um, until plan one is no longer increasing faster than plan two. And maybe just a quick note about that. Uh, I guess plan one, they're telling us its rate of change is bigger than the other. Um, so we're going to be looking for where the rate of change in plan one is greater than the rate of change in plan two. So essentially, once this stops, then we found the right endpoint of our definite integral. We're from t equals zero until this statement is no longer true. So here's our big old wall of text for how, to, how these plans are operating. Um, plan one's an investment that's increasing in value at $500 per day. Um, I, I want to be really careful about how to dissect this. So the statement that it's increasing in value at $500 per day currently is basically telling me that P prime, uh, P1 prime right now is 500 so all of these statements about increasing at a certain rate or what have you are talking about uh, the P prime, the, the marginal profit, if you will. And that it's increasing instantaneously by 1% per day. And I want to be also super, super cautious about this because when something increases at a percentage rate, that should imply exponential growth. So this is actually saying that P1 prime is an exponential function itself. And then once we get past that hurdle, then we're going to apply the same kind of principles to plan two. It's currently increasing in value. Uh, I won't use yellow. Ooh, magenta, that sounds good. Yes, right choice. At $100 per day. So this is telling me that P2 prime right now is $100. So notice that uh, P1 prime, kind of as predicted, is increasing faster right now. Its derivative is a larger value than P2. Um, and then P2 is increasing instantaneously by 2% per day. So also P2 prime is an exponential function because it is also increasing at a percentage rate. That's what it means to be an exponential function. Your, 111 your, your college algebra teacher will probably talk to you about that. Uh, okay, so what we've got is that each of these rates of profit is increasing exponentially. Uh, we have the it, it, different books use different labels for this, but if you have something growing at an instantaneous rate of 1% per whatever time unit, um, then we basically get an exponential function with K, this rate uh, on, uh, like look, you may have heard PERT formula for this so you have some starting value and then e to the and then here's our rate of growth so the 0.01 is our uh, one percent per day so then uh, it's worth 
just another comment, this is still the derivative of profit. Yes, we could figure out what the profit function looks like from this, but what all the descriptions that have been given to us so far are about p prime. And then a, a similar story for p2 prime, we've got uh, initially 100, so there's our, our y-intercept, if you will, and then it was growing at 2%. So, so you can see, okay, this one starts out as a larger value, starts out at 500, this one starts out at 100, but this one's only growing by 1% per day, this one's growing by 2% per day. Eventually, this one will outstrip the, the first investment, at least in terms of rate. So net excess profit is this definition they gave us, so we can really just apply that with fidelity. And we're, uh, the only problem is, so we figured out P1 prime and P2 prime, that's great. I, I guess I don't know what A and B are. Maybe, maybe we know what A is because they told us start right now. But B is a little bit of a mystery, uh, at least for the moment. But remember that they said, look, figure out when plan one stops increasing faster and then you'll have the other side of this interval. In other words, you'll have, you'll have found the value of B. So what we really want is to look at this relationship and figure out when does this stop happening? So for what T values is this true? Well, we have formulas now for P1 prime and P2 prime, so we can use those. And now we have an inequality that we're gonna to try to solve. So uh, maybe suggestions here would be to divide the 100 over. So we'd end up with just five. Uh, and we could also divide this term over. So maybe, maybe I'll even write this as essentially dividing both sides by 100 and by e to the 0.1t. Uh, I'm hoping this won't intersect deleteriously with the, uh, the next line. No, but my second grade scrawl will. Ah, just barely missed overlapping. So if we divide by 100, this right side gets cleaned up of, uh, of constants. So now you have 500 over 100, so there's the five. If you divide by e to the 0.01, then you get this great uh, property of exponents where you get to subtract their powers. So on the right side, we still we have one e term with a 0.02t and a, uh, subtracting the 0.01t. And if we pick up on that, sub finish out that subtraction and the exponent, and then remember we use logarithms to resolve this, we would take some flavor of log, but I think natural log is the, is the most logical one. So we would take our uh, natural log, throw that on both sides. That's gonna make our e to the whatever go away and, and then we're in good shape. So last thing to do would be divide out that 0.01. So this gives us an approximate value of 160.9-ish. And just for the sake of this, let's round to the nearest day. And remember, what we found is that essentially after 161-ish days, that first investment stops increasing at a faster rate than the other one. We don't actually know their, their relative profits. We never know a starting value for these. But what, what we're curious about is which one gains more over this time. So as soon as that first plan stops increasing at a faster rate, we stop looking because that's what we were instructed to do. So now we have the last piece of the puzzle. We know this 161 now, which is, which is great. Okay, so uh, here we are. We've got uh, a, a definite integral that we're actually capable of working with, and now we just gotta go to town. So each of these two terms, you can separate over subtraction, which is handy. Uh, each of these two terms has our exponential rule. So basically, we're going to end up with e to the whatever still, but we'll divide by that constant, that k. So we're going to have some extra big coefficients with these. This would be like 50,000. This would be uh, something similar. Um, and then uh, we've got some exponents to manage. But this is something a calculator can help us out with. And we get actually pretty close to a nice round number, almost 80 grand. And so our conclusion from this is basically... Uh, in the initial 161 days, because we went from now, from t equals 0 until t equals 161, plan 1's profit exceeded that one by pretty close to $80,000, $79,999.96. So we don't really know their, uh, their, their absolute values of profit. We don't know where they started. But what we do know is that plan 1 grew by $80,000 more than plan 2 did. Okay, so there's another application of area between two curves. We'll come back in the next video and we'll talk about another application of this principle.